Joining me now is ABC News Chief Washington Correspondent Jonathan Carl. He's the co-anchor of ABC's This Week and author of the new book, Tired of Winning, and one of the reporters who reported all of these new details over the weekend. So I wanted to start there because we've heard bits and pieces about Trump's inaction on January 6th, and you wrote about a lot of it in your book. But what stuck out most to you about some of the new reporting from this weekend that you were responsible for? Uh, and we, we have heard a lot. I wrote about this. The January 6th committee did an entire primetime hearing yeah. and 187 minutes of inaction, Trump in the White House while the Capitol was under attack. What's significant here are, are really are a couple of things. One, it's Dan Scavino. Mm. And understand who Dan Scavino is. This is the guy who's worked for Trump since he was a teenager. He was his caddy. Decades. Uh, he, he was the most loyal guy. There's only two people in the world allowed to tweet from real Donald Trump, and it was Dan Scavino and Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in charge of the social media. He was his deputy chief of staff. His office was right next to the Oval Office. Nobody was closer outside of maybe Ivanka in the Trump White House. So to hear him provide this vivid description to investigators of what he witnessed, because he was also one of the few people that was with Trump for the entirety mm -hmm. of January 6th, so for a little bit of time when he went to dinner later in the day. He was with Trump, and he describes Trump arms folded, honed in on the TV, watching the riot play out on Fox News as Scavino himself is going in and pleading with him to do something, to put out some kind of a message, to call the attackers off. And as the others, Mark Meadows, Ivanka, the White House lawyers are doing the same. And he says that Trump, to the investigators, is non-responsive. Is non-responsive, is angry, angry, not even looking at them, looking at the TV, angry, but saying... They are angry on my behalf. Right. The people attacking the Capitol are angry on my behalf. He wasn't angry about the violence. He was no. angry that the election he felt was had stolen. been stolen. That's what he was saying. So this is explicit. And again, this isn't Liz Cheney saying it. Mm. This isn't me writing it in a book. No, it's uh, Dan Scavino. Dan Scavino refused to talk to the January 6th committee. I was unable to speak with him for, for my book. This is an eyewitness account under oath from somebody who is as close to the president, the former president, as anybody, and is still with him to this day. Still with him to this day. Now, one of the other pieces of your reporting was about Trump's response to Mike Pence, his vice president, the threat of him being hanged and under threat from people. And in your reporting, uh, per Dan Scavino, he said, so what? That was Trump's yeah. response. Uh, I mean, this is, and again, tremendous reporting on, on from the ABC News investigative team. I, I, I want to say d fantastic reporting. Nick Luna was one of the president's, the former president's body men, mm -hmm. so, you know, the his personal assistant. And Nick Luna is the person that tells Trump on January 6th that Mike Pence had to be evacuated from the Senate chamber and taken to a secure location because of the violence at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And the response, again, according to Nick Luna, Another Trump loyalist, who, by the way, continued to work for him for a long time in Mar-a-Lago. This is not, you know, some Trump critic. This is, again, isn't Liz Cheney saying this. This is Nick Luna saying that Trump's response was, so what? And the investigators, you know, ask, what, what, what did you take that to mean? That he, did, he wasn't concerned uh, that his loyal vice president might be in physical danger. And the fact that he's such a loyal to such an important piece. Now, you also talked to Trump about that day, and we want to play a little bit of that and talk about that as well. Now we're living in an era of a second. You heard those chants. That was terrible. I mean, was, you know, the... He could have... Well, the people were very angry. We're saying hang my Because it's, it's common sense, John. It's common sense that you're supposed to protect. How can you... If you know a vote is fraudulent, right, yeah. how can you pass on a fraudulent vote to Congress? It's common sense. It's very consistent, is the point. You had spoken with him about it. Close aides have said this. So for anyone who's thinking, there's no way he said that. There's a lot of evidence that's there's, backing there's that There's a lot up. of evidence. There's Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony. But, but that, listening to that sound, again, in conjunction with what we've heard from Scavino and Luna, I mean, th this is a really important point. And, and, and to your point, in the open of this show, this is not old news. Uh, this is Trump's state of mind and what truly, I think, are the defining hours of the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think he sees that day as the defining moment of the Trump presidency. He sees January 6th as a great moment because the people came to Washington for him, because they agreed with him that the election was stolen, again, because they were angry on his behalf. But to hear him 
telling me in that interview, which was just a couple of months after January 6th, that it's common sense mm. that people would want to call for the, the, the execution of his vice president. And he's justifying it by saying they're angry. Again, the exact same way Dan Scavino describes what Trump said in real time on January 6th. Now, you have obviously written books about Trump. You know a lot about him. One of the things that stuck out to me recently is his an, a view, his announcement that he's going to be attending his legal hearings. Why do you think that is? Well, by the way, he's spent a, a number of days in court with the civil case in New York. He seems to, you know, I, I wrote really detailed descriptions of his first appearances in court, uh, his first arraignment in New York, his first arraignment on federal charges in Florida. And when, when he first was in a courtroom, he's not in charge. The, the, uh, the judge is in charge. He has to rise when the judge comes Right, which the is room. why. Why is he, he coming back he again seemed, and again? He seemed uncomfortable and freaked out about it. But I think what has happened since then is that his campaign has become inseparable uh, from mm. his, his legal cases. First of all, it's many ways. It, 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 it's a campaign not just to win the White House, but to stay out of jail. Uh, but he's made the theme of being a victim and getting retribution against those who have victimized him, and he says, by extension, victimized all my supporters, the centerpiece of his campaign. So that's why he's there. It's, indis it's indistinguishable from his campaign. There's not much of an agenda he's outlining. Uh, uh, for, for, not a lot of policy term. speed. Yeah, well, yeah. The big question will be, may work in a primary, does it work in the general? Yeah, yeah. Jonathan Carl, thank you. Great reporting from the investigative team and you, and a great book that covers a lot about Trump.